Frenchie, why you got beef with Bahamadia? Yeah. Beef with Bahamadia. You know I got beef? You said you got beef with Bahamadia. I said I got beats. He said he got beats. Oh. Oh. Beats. My nigga, I'm a producer. He got some boom back for him. You make beats, French. French, you be making beats. I was trying to stir the pot. Yep. I make beats from time to time, yes. Oh, wait. I, I, I only have a gold record, uh, the, the, the award for the best studio Frenchie, in New York City. I know you're famous, bruh. What the fuck was popping is your boy Mike when I was like, Penub and all the wrong places. You said Wookie Penub, is that what you said? Yep. You just did Eddie Murphy? I like oh, it. Oh, she said Wookie Penub. She said Wookie Penub. She took it back. Y'all about, about, about to get us a lawsuit with that shit. Wookie Penub? You can't, we can't Wookie say Wookie Penub. Wookie Penub. Listen, I'm pretty sure Eddie got that shit copywritten and trademarked. Fuck around if you want. <laughs> <laughs> he mm -hmm. said, fuck around and find out. That's right. I mean, Wait, excuse they, me, but I can say it on here. I'm not selling it or putting it on fucking band camp. Beans, get, it, Beans, get in his, get in his non-legal ass. My God. Eats everything in his path. Because every once in a while, the lion has to show the jackals who he is. Watch for the poison when you receive the flowers. Never get hemmed and locked into greed and power. I seen them cowards and newcomers, they seem empowered. Too sweet and sour, won't be around us, they'll be devoured. Seamless hours with the intro king on the stream with powers. Best to date, get your section eight if you would need a vouchers. I've been embracing the bitter hate and was sitting patient since this invasion. The nigga rain and precipitation. This amazing, it gives a basis to skip your playlist. Crucial 13 is your face, you strictly entertainment. Squad. And you wish and pray in my mental breaking, a mental case that has been displaying the gift of great. That's Heezy Hines. Also, Mike Wise, both my homies, to start this one off. It's called Payback. It's your boy Powers. We in the building. We're going to get right to it. Hey, down there, you see that beautiful young lady, better known as the Boston Baked Bitch, coming to give it to you. Anybody can get it. Put some respect on her name. It's DJ Beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I already know. And that dude up there, the one that looks like he perpetually about to smack me in the face. Oh. Where's your cam at? Hey. Okay. Boom, in back. And he should smack me. Um, Security. That's a piss to fuck your feelings. Also, AKA Big French, the pragmatic CEO of Mad Bull Production Studios in Harlem, New York, Lord Mob, Mix Master and Production Genius. Big French is in the building. Okay, and so Deuce is not with us today. Deuce is always busy, so we find time to bring in special guests. So we got a special guest host this week. Uh, bear with me as I break down the man's credentials. Darren Tolliver has been has over 20 years of professional experience in social work in the areas of childhood development, mental health, and education. He holds a bachelor's degree in political science from Temple University and a master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania School of Social Work. Um, he is associate director for the African American Resource Center at the University of Pennsylvania and serves as the chairperson for the men of color and co-chairs the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Symposium. As a lifelong community advocate, Darren is an acting commissioner in Philadelphia, serving on the Mayor's Commission of African American Males, a position appointed by former Mayor Michael Nutter and currently Mayor James Kenney. Darren is currently a PhD candidate working on his PhD in social work education at Widener University with a particular interest in evidence-based research and strategies that will decrease gun violence. Currently a member of the National Association of Social Workers. He was selected by the social impact organization Generosity as one of the 12 people of color strengthening the social impact sector in Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Mike Powers Reloaded, Mr. Darren Tolliver. Oh. Woo. Thank you. I, I'm honored to be here. I'll just say Man, I'm very honored to be here and I appreciate you and everything you're doing, Mike. Thank you so much. And then it's hot up here. But um we you've been talking for a long time. Right now, son. We've been talking for a long time, Darren. And yeah. um it had to be like over six to seven months. So to finally be I wanted to get this done right. I didn't just want to bring you on the universe aligned to whereas I got this new show. My great friends, very talented superstars on the screen with us. It made sense to do it right now. Um, so a little bit later on in the show, 
we're going to get into your area of expertise. I think today we want to talk about black mental health a little bit specifically, but then Beans mm -hmm. has some things that she's struggling with as well. That she, she might, <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I saying too much, Beans? I mean, hey, we don't have that much time. We don't. <laughs> So, but, 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 but before we get there, he might send me a bill, you know, no, I wouldn't do that. I'll do a pro bono. It's fine. Don't worry. Oh, that's what's up. We need, we need some pro bono mental health up out here. But we need people to give back. I'm about to give, it's about giving back. It's not always about a dollar. So you're amazing. Anything we can do that can help the situation where we're at now in America. And I'm all for it. And thank Especially you. Especially when it involves our people. And then, so before that, before we go to his specific part, we talking about the mental health thing, right? He's going to be basically co-hosting with us and we're going to have this conversation. I think everybody has notes and uh, you just you kind of get in where you fit in before we just even get to that real quick. So I just want to let y'all know I'm saying this because it's a, it's a woman on the screen right now. So I don't feel too embarrassed about saying what I'm about to say, but I was get, I like to play music before I get ready. When she's like, used to this stuff. Derek came through. And I was playing Bruno Mars at the time. But before that, I was downstairs getting ready. I was playing Anita. I'm not going to lie. I was playing Anita Baker. You bring me joy. I just start crying. Listen, I start thinking about my girl and start crying. Is that weird? No, man. That's, that's fine. That's that's actually a beautiful um, that you're in, in tune with who you are um, as a person. I, that's actually great. That means she means a lot to you, man. So that's oh, man. I just I felt kind of like I said, why is this happening to me? But just tears start falling. So I had to, you know, I had to switch it up. Yeah, let's switch it up. French, <laughs> stop. But today's show, y'all looking at y'all notes. I didn't do this on purpose, people. I didn't intend for this whole entire show to be about Kanye West. Um, I got another show I'm about to do about Kanye West. I mean, this it, is a mental health show. It's a <laughs> bingo. And so let's start with with the with the with the Beanie Siegel story, right? So um Ye was on Drink Champs. Big get for Nori and them, right? Like, Ye shows up to drink champs? So he shows up and he does Ye. I haven't seen the whole interview, right? I'm busy. But <clears throat> I did read that Kanye said that it was Beanie Siegel who gifted him the name, and this is appropriate, Philadelphia's in the building, right? Um, that Beans gave Ye the name Yeezy. Boy Yeezy. Right. The reason, so he's in the, because he was in the studio with me, he said, he, he said, Beans, let me, uh, I'm sorry, Beanie, let me wear the Rockefeller chain, you know, because Kanye was the little guy. So he said, yo, Beanie, embrace me. And then he was the one that gave me that term of endearment, that name Yeezy. And he, he was said, in state property too, where my all that Beans tag comes from. There you go. Kanye, remember he stabbed the dude. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and the property too. You remember that, huh? And hell yeah, it's with my, with my, yeah, that's a whole other story. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so Yeezy, you had to, right? It's not just a nickname, right? It's a brand that's right. worth money. He made and like one point six billion last year. Some like crazy one point something, shit, yeah. Like and so Bean said he came out with the. <laughs> With the quote, and he said, "Yo, Kanye promised me fifty million, right? Fifty million plus what? Five percent stock in Yeezy, right? Now go back, and then there's another quote. I don't know if it's from that Drink Champs interview or somewhere else, but Ye said, I owe, I still owe Beanie money, and I've been trying to give him this money oh, for a minute. Oh, he, he, he gonna get the money. Yeah. He gonna get the money. <laughs> I think the member will get through it." <laughs> Oh, he gonna watch it. Go ahead. Yeah, cause really, how you all money though? I don't understand. Cause he made up the name Yeezy. Mm. I've been looking for. I don't know what this means. I've been beans. He said I've been trying to pay him. Trying so to pay let me, him. Let me let me see. I might have the exact quote here, but I'm pretty sure he said on there. I've been, I've been trying looking, to pay him. I've been looking this. for this man so I could give him this. Yeah. Money. Listen. Let's, you know the name oh. Yeezy is a brand now. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think of something and, and as brand, um, I mean, Beans mentioned, you know, it's a billion dollar um, franchise. Right. You think of you think of the lady. Her name was Carolyn something who made the Nike swoosh logo. Right. They gave her like thirty five dollars, forty dollars or something for it. And what she had to go through for them to make it right. So oh, it's only they fair, made it it's only fair like, that Beans they made it is doing like she just handed over that money for the <clears throat> Well, she, they paid her like 35, 40 bucks for it. It was, you know, they didn't know it was going to be where it is. 
And um, I mean, Nike eventually made it right for her, you know, but I mean, we're not, we're not talking about chump change here, you know? It's so, like mathematics with the Wu-Tang symbol. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow, there you go, yeah. Somebody, yeah, I mean, you know, that's we're in the age of branding on social media, right? So it's it's important to, 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 to hey, you gotta compensate somebody who helped you get to that level. You know, even with the name, I mean, damn, Yeezy. I mean, you know, I mean, that's that gave him a whole new life. It's almost like Diddy being a puff, you know, puff daddy to Diddy to, you know, whatever. Whatever he is now. French, what you got? I don't know. How hard is it to pay a nigga these days? I, I've been trying to pay him. How? <laughs> Fuck out of here, B. Yeah, that's that's that talk talk. So you're you're Kanye motherfucking West. You can't get your your hands on somebody's fucking phone number. I mean, I could get my hands on Beanie Siegel's phone number in two phone calls. Like you could haphazardly bump into Beanie on the street. You could Google his cash app. Listen, I'm Petty. He's always in Philly. You see him all down here in Philly, so it's no big deal. I'm King Petty. I mean, when you say when you say I'm trying to pay him, would you try to pay him in cash? The fuck out of here. Listen, when I when I um when I saw this go down and then I heard that Kanye had a song with Soulja Boy, the the way I'm petty, right? If I was Beanie Siegel, I'm like, nigga, you found the time to get in touch with Soulja Boy? <laughs> you done made it all the way to fucking Soulja Boy. Like I thought it was some funny shit when you was running around in the milk and magnesia box with the little what was the little dude name, right? But but okay, so here's the thing though. So I think everybody on the screen thinks Ye is not about to get his boy $50 million. But here's the problem. There's a quote where, where Ye said, I'm looking for him. I've been looking for him. It's time to go to court. He put it out there already. I mean, it's, yeah. it's almost like, dude, I can't. I mean, like, by your own you admission, your own you admission you're you saying it. you owe him money. I mean, it doesn't. You I mean, I, if I'm his attorney, oh, it's, it's listen, being, we, 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 we you, how much you want me to front you? Because you're about to get paid. Right. He's on Where video. He he's on audio. He's you can't deny it. What are you going to say? Is it how because about of this? mental health? You state? on a major platform. Like, that Nori show is now a major platform. Yeah. You on a major platform talking about you owe him money. And maybe it's... he, you know what? Maybe he does want to make it genuinely right. You know what I mean? It's not that he may be ducking him or whatever. You never know, man. Maybe he's like, you know what? It's time for me to pay up. Let me pay this. What's taking money. you so long? Fifty million dollars. So then, I mean, yeah. who, who? No matter how much money you have, who just wants to be like, let me just find a motherfucker and hand him fifty million? Real yeah, quick. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a process. He's out it's there. It's a process he's because out moving there. forward, he's gonna say, you know, they probably got his lawyers coming together, making sure they draft stuff up. Like this may be a one-time okay, payment be because he did ask for he did ask for a five percent share in his name. If I'm not mistaken, I think there was also. It, I think it's a great. No. It, it's stock. Jay promised them right. five percent yeah. and five and five percent. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, which I mean, is going, which is which is like another fucking I think fifty million dollars. What's five? Listen, what's five percent of one point six billion? Right, that might be fifty million. Ooh, maybe Something I like need to reach for the calculator right now. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, let's just, but I think we should stop. Today, everybody should just say today, don't beans look beautiful today. Am I right or wrong? Let's just like props giving. That's all. Let's do that, though. You know don't I mean? make me in, blush now. In the middle of the fucking show, though. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people out there that's like, why did he do that? Oh, fuck them if they don't like it. Thank you. So, Big Sean is now off of good music, right? That's $75 million. $75 million. And, and, and Ye told Drink Champs that Big Sean was, was the worst signing ever. Hold on, not only did he say that, the motherfucker pulled out a fake tombstone and said, it's going to read, I deserve to be here because I saw Big, Big Sean. Sean. How disrespectful is that? Big Sean. Ooh. And then wow. and then Big Sean said, this guy owe me six million. Well, it didn't, and somebody said three million and then he, he tweeted more like six, but then- That's exactly right. Tweeted. So- that's exactly right. So, look, listen. Um, what do we think about Kanye saying that dog and Big Sean like that? I don't know. And then Big Sean came back and he had a post like he said, "I was just with this man the other day. This is after he did the interview, right? He go a picture of me and this dude. He ain't say none of that shit." So what? Yeah, the but how, he, how about he didn't say anything to him about the money that he owed? I'm not gonna be around somebody chilling and I know you owe me six million. So let's let's move on to this where it gets really weird. 
the Sunday service thing. Okay, listen. Marilyn Manson's there. And they're they're, in a, they're they're praying, and I can't make this shit up. Justin Bieber's there too. Like if you would have told me at one at some point in in my existence, I was going to watch Kanye West, Marilyn Manson, and Justin Bieber in a prayer circle together, I would have never thought that. But it happened. Marilyn Manson is a troublesome figure right now. He did. He's got a whole lot of sexual assault allegations, rape allegation. One of them was thrown out of court. I think it was a lawsuit that was thrown out of court. So let's be fair about the due process part of it. Somebody did go to court and the judge said, we're getting rid of this. But it's a lot, right? It's a lot of allegations out there. Oh, I find it weird to find, to find Marilyn Manson all of a sudden showing up next to Kanye doing all of this and and then he's praying right what about a guy whose most famous album is called Antichrist Superstar yeah he used to rip up bibles on stage um what's going on with that somebody told me one time that um you know when church is for sinners and people who don't believe and the goal is to have them converted I'm not saying that what Marilyn Manson did in the past and all that, you know, it's obvious, like you mentioned, the Bible stuff on stage. I mean, he was he was tripping. But I mean, people are susceptible to change and and maybe, you know, in Kanye's unique way, he was able to bring those people and, and, and show them a light or show them that. So that's what the church I've always thought that's what the church is to bring people who are lost and kind of bring them back into the fold. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just looking at it like the glass is half full instead of half empty. That, that's just how I choose to look at it. And I believe maybe, maybe some he was bringing them to the right side. That's, a, that's, that's an idea in theory about church, right? Did you see the one video about where, the, where he, I don't know where they was at, but these black men was whipping on these children with these belts. Somebody, it was, it was on your friend's page, French. Shout to Cotton Candy. It was on her page. She had it on her page. Where these Cotton, ladies, yeah. That would be on one of Frenchie's friends' pages. Cotton, Cotton Candy. Cotton Candy? Oh, yeah. wow. You know who Cotton Candy is, Darren? Of course that. he does. I have no recollection to who Cotton <laughs> Candy is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. All I would say is uh, great minds think alike. But continue. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was on her page. But this, did you see that video? The pastor was whipping these boys. They was all bent over and he was Man, going... Listen. What, yeah, part of the, yeah. what part of the game is that, man? If y'all don't get the fuck out of here with this dumb shit, like... Is that Pentecostal shit? Man. Also, Mar Marilyn Manson, half of his name is named after a serial killer, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and then Justin Bieber. I can't Charles think of Lanson. that guy out. What Who the... cares? <laughs> Who cares? He got a, I like a couple of his songs, though. He got a Who couple cares, of cares, though? Justin huh? Bieber. Who cares about Justin Bieber? I don't know. I mean, I just find it. I think it's an interesting dynamic that it was all three of them, and then out of nowhere, it's just Justin Bieber. Pop. Like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. He's wearing these masks, right? And we talked. To, I don't know who I talked about this with, but you're supposed to wear a mask when you probably want to go. You trying to be incognito, but you're going through airports with a with a bedazzled mask on, ski mask. We don't know who you are. And now you're wearing dad jeans and members only jacket from 1972 with a haircut. The brand Yeezy is the ugliest shit I've ever seen. And I'm sorry to anybody who wears it. People that rock it, listen to each his own. To me personally, the fucking wanton ass clogs or whatever them things. Look, I'm not into it. Never have been. But Those are like Nerf it, footballs. <laughs> they do. They do. You're yes. right. <laughs> I just, Yo, I can't. That's I like, ask kids, what's the big deal it, about my like, you know, a nerf ball. Hey, he just got, he's got more than one pair of shoes, right? Because I hear people talk about wearing Yeezys all the time. So it's, it's some Yeezys out there that actually look good, right? I don't like any of them. I think I you may have seen them. You got, you got, you got, the, okay. you got the nerf football ones. You got the hovercraft joints. <laughs> that when they start to get old, they look like potatoes. Yes. I hate um, them all. I just can't get with him. I can't, it's a different generation. I mean, uh, I, everything Beans is saying is right. I can't bang with him. I don't. I, I, I think people buy them just just because they say Yeezy. That's what I'm saying. It's it's a following. They're they're fucking ugly. I'm sorry. This is For ugly. Me, I have to mention this. This is important. I'm at the University of Pennsylvania. Right, right across the walkway from me is the Wharton School of Business, the number mm -hmm. one business school in America. They're second in um, 
behind Harvard in terms of the number of alumni billionaires wow. with a B. When people say they're trying to get the bag, I laugh at them because they don't know what the bag looked like. Hmm. I'm telling you, I, I've seen the bag. There's a student that goes, I, if I tell you the students and who they are, you would be like, wow. Like their parents are worth billions with a B. That you see Kai is 1.6. Yeah. Make that, uh, add, to, add another one to that or uh, two. I'm trying to tell you, it's, it's billionaires that's over here. So when people say, oh, I'm trying to get this, I'm trying to do that. I'm like, you don't know where the money is. I know where the money is. A lot of people that would, that go to Wharton yeah. was born on third base, right? So Trump went to Wharton. Trump went to, we, we don't even, they don't even acknowledge Trump here at Penn. They can't, you know, they can't despise him. But he's not, see, Wharton is a school. It's a great business-minded school. But if you're trying to get the bag and learn the ins and outs of how to get the bag legally, you want to go to Wharton. I'm trying to tell you. I like that. And I know I'm not the only one that's enjoying this conversation. Jeez. We could, but I think I already said this. I might have said this to Beans, but this ain't, you know, you all, you're going to be recurring. We'll be, we'll always be bringing you back because I like your spit. Um, meaning the way he talks. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> hey Mike, you, you're a good dude. I love what you're doing. I love your mission. And, 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 and I love, I'm a grassroots on the ground, boots on the ground kind of guy. And and I love the fact that the way you're doing it, man, because right now, give yourself a round of applause if you can do it with a machine. But that's what's needed now. I think hip hop is going so commercial and so far out. We forget that this just started in the streets. I'm a grassroots I'm on the corners. Say, and that's what I believe. But yeah, if, man. If, 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 you, if you make me cry, I'm blocking you on IG. Damn. So don't. Don't do <laughs> mental health is a thing that a lot of people go through. I've had my issues, you know what I mean? Um, um, diagnosed major depressive disorder, PTSD. You know, I'm not gonna talk about what Beans has been through. She could talk about wh whatever she's been through. Um, and so I think this is important for us as black men to have this conversation, especially in this hip hop realm where it's very hyper masculine and people is very closed off about talking about what they going through. Right. And so yeah. what I want to ask you first, is, is there a stigma amongst black men going through depression? Um, and if, if so, how has the stigma manifested itself in the black community overall? You know, Mike, I have to really commend you for pushing this because, mm -hmm. um, the stigma is still real. Mm -hmm. um, just answer that part. Um, but to, to but to bring this to light, to have this discussion, and to be so transparent about it, is something that we need brothers to see. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons why we have a high rate in Philadelphia of violence, mm -hmm. because we have a number of young black and brown men and boys who are suffering um, with a mental health issue, uh, post traumatic stress. Um, um, depression, uh, all types of different, um, you know, um, issues. And they are so afraid, the stigma has them afraid of wanting to address whatever the concern is. Um, they think that, you know, you hear the stigma, oh, you suffer from depression equals crazy. Mm -hmm. You suffer from um, bipolar, know, uh, bipolar, Something's wrong with you. You know, we think of the movies back in the day. Think of the movies like um, Soul Food, where they used to take the tray of food up to Big Mama's brother and, and, and put the tray on the floor, and he'll open the door and just grab it real fast yeah, and close yeah. the door. Yep. You know, but we don't say that he has a mental illness, but more than that, he doesn't have to be like that. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to keep suffering. You don't have to be in the dark about it. The stigma is keep pushing people in the and and you know in those spaces mm -hmm. but the good thing is like what you're doing so you're bringing and I'm, I'm, I'm not to just blow you up i'm being honest it's just that you're bringing um a very very important point you're bringing it to the forefront so people could understand i work with physicians i work with doctors faculty rich millionaires all kinds of people right they all have a therapist or somebody online and, and right with them so it's normal to have conversations. It's not necessarily, and a lot of people don't necessarily need a psychotropic medication. Sometimes it's just CBT, you know, some, some kind of cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy mm -hmm. that can have people say, hey, you know, I never thought of it like that. You know, when you can get a professional, and I'm not talking about these professionals on Google who have degrees from Google University either. All right, let's get that clear mm -hmm. because everybody and their grandmother think they know they have the answer, right? The key is to be able to talk to somebody who is trained professionally that can diagnose 
a person with clinical depression, bipolar, mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress, you know, and who has the, um, the wherewithal and the knowledge to be able to assist them professionally and appropriately. I think also there's a lot of, let's say, young black men, girls too, that have something going on with their mental health when they're 9, 10, 11, they don't know, right? Our brains ain't developed enough to even know that we're going through something that needs to be either diagnosed or take it to a professional. And then you suffer, right? Because if you got a parent that's not focused on that, right? They don't see that and they don't take you to, now my mom did when I was like 14, took me to get some counseling or whatever, but then she pulled me out of the psychologist's office because the psychologist said, mom, I'm not, I love my mom, that's my rock. But she took me out of that because the, the, uh, the therapist said, well, you know, he can keep his room dirty if he wants. <laughs> My mom is a, she's a black woman. She said, hey, nigga. Mom ain't trying to hear that. And it's a, listen, here's one thing, too. I mean, <laughs> cultural, I mean, we, some of these things we're taught that you need to have somebody who is culturally in tune with you. Sometimes, not saying you can't, but it's good to have a therapist who's familiar with your milieu or where you come from and your upbringing and things like that. So when you say certain things, you use certain lingo, they're like, oh, okay, I'm on, I, I, I peep it. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And that's important. As far as, you know, the stigma piece, I, I have to keep saying this. We, we have to really deconstruct that barrier that keeps prohibiting young black and brown boys and girls from being able to find the supports necessary to live a fruitful life. Mike, if you're sitting there now, you know, you know, they was busting on you earlier about the FUBU I and mean, we ain't gonna get into all that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but just, just imagine, you know, you, you hurt your knee and or, or something happened, playing ball, shoulder, I got neck injury, all this, you know, you go to the doctor for it. You know, we're older, I'm getting older. I, hey, listen, my neck, my spine, my shoulder's not right. I play like, you know, you know, fluffy eagles, we dirty players, so that's how we play, right? But we go get help for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is it impossible to think that we can't get help for our own brain? Because you got to admit that there's imbalance. something wrong first. Correct. Right. First, you got to admit that it's a problem. It's a mm -hmm. <coughs> until, until, and listen, and I, so full disclosure, I had a family member who went through a traumatic experience. And sometimes mental health disorders don't kick in for some people until they're in their mid to late 20s moving forward they started noticing things and this member started noticing, we started noticing things that was not not right, right? And then when it started happening more and more and more, it got to the point it, they were unsafe and we had to get them, we had to get them help, i.e., you know, 302 them, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they finally got stabilized and they got some medication to help their chemical balance, to bring up their, you know, um, their levels, to keep them normal, they said they don't even remember what happened. They don't even recall anything. That's, and listen, that's the part and, that is why you need to really make sure if you see someone that's concerning to you, you know, talk to them about some help. Yeah, and that was just one question. So we're doing a little bit too much right now. But only be, I understand, I, but that's fine. I understand this. You're going to continue to be back. As long as this show is on, we're going to find space for you to come back. This that's is another thing. We don't tell people we love each other enough. Thank you. Listen, we don't, we don't. And I'm, I'm, do so I'm a, so cause you said that and my, 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 I was having a conversation with my girl about this too. And I had, I've had this conversation on my show many a time. I, I, there's certain people I love that's in this game, right? I love them to death. Like, but people's on the screen right now. I love them. Right. Right. So, but people go, they think, but yo, but you only, you only knew French for like a year. You, you only knew Bates for this long. How you can, that's phony that you, listen, I tell people, Here's what's weird when you say that to me. Love is supposed to be your default mechanism. You got to give me a reason not to. That's where I be at with it. Um, beans and French, it, whatever y'all want to do, if y'all want to get up in here, don't let me stop you. Or um, well, Yeah, French, go ahead. So while we got them here, you know, I mean, it's so prevalent that um, the mental health of black and brown people goes totally unnoticed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially in the hoods. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we're brought up kind of like, especially as black men, oh, 
You can't, you know, we're, we're, told, we're taught from young to suppress our emotions. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, bet, you bet not, you know, uncle punch you in the chest, you bet not cry. You bet not cry. You know, and you go through your life, you know, that way, you, we've all become experts at suppressing feelings. Mm. Until yeah. that moment where you just can't, you know what I'm saying? It becomes more than you can handle. And a lot of people snap at that moment. You said that it doesn't get noticed. I would push back and say it is noticed, but then what you just said, you, you don't even realize it afterward, you're right. It's the masculinity part that keeps them not wanting to have it being demonstrated. Man, suck it up. You acting like a little pussy, right? We've heard that coming up. Oh, man, get up. You, you hurt your leg playing ball or whatever, whatever. Stop being a little sucker. Stop being a little bitch, right? We, we, we've all at some point experienced that, but we, didn't, we never really realized how much damage that did to us psychologically. I mean, I have so much that I could say. So I'm going to, I'll try to hit some, some main points. So I'm going to stop mm-hmm. by saying this because my voice is already cracking. I started crying from the beginning. Mm. And one of the things is I don't give a fuck. I'm proud to do it because it took me, I had to realize it myself. I want to say in my like, I mean, I'm, I'm young now, but, and I want to say in my thirties to realize, like, I, I never used to cry. And because of that, and I, I can remember to the first time that I really should have cried over some shit and I didn't because my family, it just wasn't like that. I was violent. So my growing up, you know, I was just constantly getting in trouble for assault and stuff like that. And it took me smacking one of my boyfriends back in middle school for him to be like, you're abusive because you got abused. And like, boom, <laughs> that shit hit me. And I mean, even then, it still took me years. So I have, you know, I'm in a male dominated industry and I am so grateful for the men that I have in my corner. Um, and, and a lot of them tell me all the time that I have to have a tough skin and I do. I do have to be extra tough, but I always say I'm not ashamed to cry because I don't hurt people anymore because I used to be <sighs> fucked up because that's how I would release. Because just like Frenchie said, Y'all bottle this shit up. So the reason I began crying at the beginning, especially because this was a question that I had too, because I know like seasonal depression tends to be a thing. Um, And right now, I just said it to a good friend of mine yesterday that was talking about, you know, I don't want to put anybody's business out there, but he was talking to me about some real personal shit. And, you know, I said to him to please open up more because I understand that first of all, how hot it is, that stigma for men, they have to be fucking strong about everything. I get it. It's bullshit. I get it. I don't like it, but I, I get it. But especially as black men and especially right now and right now, the way the world is, that is so fucking unfair. So that's why I started crying at the beginning, because I know so many of my friends that are going through it. And just like you said, you know, they don't they, they handle it in their own way. They, get, they don't want to put it on somebody else. And you just never know what could happen. I mean, I'm somebody, yeah. I'm not even going to lie. I can talk about it now. I can talk about so much that I went through as a kid. But like, I killed myself and got brought back to life. And my God, after losing somebody to suicide, I would never fucking do that. And it's one thing that keeps me when even I get into my darkest moments, I, I am able to think of the other people out there. But there's yeah. so many, and especially black and brown men right now that internalize everything. And and I mean, I'm I'm single, I live by myself, but through this whole pandemic and everything that's been going on, there's a lot of people that have been cooped up together. You know what I'm saying? And like, sure who, the, who do they have to talk to? So, yeah. you know- And that's the thing, that's it, the thing, I, you know, being- and not I, everybody I, can I, afford a therapist, because a therapist- I, I, And I applaud that. you because everything you said, not even just, I mean, the stuff that you've mentioned about men and, and what they go through, I, that's true. But even with yourself, to be able to acknowledge your own vulnerability, that's what it means to say, hey, you know what, people, I'm vulnerable. I have a chink in my armor and I'm not afraid to say that I have it. And that's what we need to start talking to these young men and women about saying that, hey, it's okay. Crying, I, I, listen, 
it's when you cry, it's not always a bad thing. We just we started this conversation, and he mentioned how he was talking about his girl, he put on a song, made him feel good. I guarantee you, he had a tear in his eye. May not have dropped, right? But he did. <laughs> Yeah. And that's a like, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. We have to we can't st- we can't keep locking our emotions down. And when we talk about violence, that's the worst time because now we need to know how you feel because we don't want you to do and perpetuate certain things. For example, she mentioned Beans mentioned as a young kid what she went through and you know being violent and stuff like that or you know somebody who has had fathers or whatever that really beat them all the time or watched him, how he disrespected mom and beat the shit out of her and all kind of stuff. When he gets in a relationship, he thinks that's normal behavior. Yeah. It's not a problem to call you bitch. I don't, to this day, I don't know how anybody does that. I, maybe I'm just that much disconnected. I just, I can't get it in me to say, to call a beautiful woman or whatever the case is, be word. I, I just don't get it. But we have kids, I'm in a store and I have to correct them. And Sometimes it's just your demeanor and how you carry yourself. Kids see me, younger kids see me, they see me, they call me, hey, Mr. Darren, how you doing? My wife hates that because she don't, don't be calling me miss. My name ain't miss. I'm not like that. I want, it's it's a respect thing. And I want them to be able to have that engagement conversation where they're open to somebody who's not down enough. I'm not down. I want to partner with them. And we can't, as adults, we can't keep pointing the fingers at kids. Yeah, when I was back in the day, when the 90s would have popped I was doing this on the corner with the ball. Blah, blah, blah. The kids are not trying to hear that. First yeah, thing I'll yeah. say is, Mike, oh, here, you in the way. That's what they do. You, they're not trying to hear it. So you got to find a way to connect with them at a level that they respect and stop t- talking. Sometimes the best skill that we have is to sit back and just listen. listen. Yeah. Hey, and I know we're going we're gonna to have you back on many times and uh because you have to do some work on i know for a fact me and beans but you know perhaps we could start um the process with french can you, can you tell us why french is such an asshole please well this is what i'm gonna say before That's i go the I, only I, reason I have, we really wanted you here this is what i'm gonna say before we go because <laughs> french is a good brother i know it i can feel it i will say that he was influenced all i can say is if you look at that versus battle that was it for me. If that's how they act up in Harlem and they come to the stage and they act like that, then I understand French. <laughs> nah, son. That, that, that that's all I'm saying. We don't do that. Hold like on, hold on. You me would me never see. expect Black Thought to get on stage and do anything like that. Philly versus Harlem. Let's go. It ain't no Philly versus Harlem. Black Thought, and that's it. That's all we need. There's nobody comparable. He knows that. Flat out. It's, it's what it is. What it is. I'm hey. not trying to be funny. It is what it is. I don't listen. You know what? That's another. You look at Jules, Joel Santana against Black Thought. That ain't gonna work. How damaging is it uh, to my mental health um, to see a picture of a blue waffle? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a very valid question. We I mean, listen, all need to know this. How scarred am I? I think French. I think to- that we need. I think I need to schedule you. Let me see what my next appointment. I'm gonna talk to my <laughs> coordinator, my assistant Colleen, to make sure that we schedule you for an appointment. Do you to come talk to me stamps? about that? I have the chair right over here because that sounds serious. No, <laughs> blue waffles. I don't. I don't get that. But guess what? I, there's a rhyme and reason to that. So okay, but um, don't Google it when you when you leave here. Don't Google blue waffle. Or and the word for JJ behind it. Don't do it. I'm going to blow up your DM and your, you know if, if it's something I don't know. But I, listen, I can't wait to the next time. I thank you so oh, much. I really appreciate this. I appreciate what you're doing, man. Keep thank up the you. doors. Love you, brother. And thank you for being here. I love you back. And we're going to close out this show with the second verse off of Easy Hines, Mike Wise, Payback. The voice you hear right now is my man, Mike Wise. I'm Mike Powers Global. The DJ B. friends. Tyler, Tyler, they can connect with us now. Go connect with each other.
No. Excluding all of your preferences. Who's recording can F with this cue the horns for my entrances. Notice where the talent is. You were short in your estimates. Focused on the alchemist. You ignoring the evidence. I'm ill-matic Nas when a beat starts. Hove on his debut. RDJ, no T-Stock. Need the whole pie when on these charts. Want my whole piece. I ain't Moses. I ain't trying to see part. Remember...